Welcome to Endoscopy on Air 2020. Watch Alessandro Repici in a young patient with multiple colonic polyps. He's a very young patient, a 26-year-old patient with um, no family history of cancer, no family history of polyps. This has been referred to us because he, he has uh, um, done a colonoscopy uh, because of uh, symptoms. And uh, during colonoscopy, he has been detected with a couple of polyps, but the bowel prep was not good. So the referral physician sent to us to provide uh, a new colonoscopy plus additional resection of polyps just in case. So let me show what we, we're using. We're using... Uh, of course, the latest generation scope from uh, uh, Fujifilm. Can you have a look at this, the Series 7000? Normally, for these procedures, I love to use the periodic colonoscope, which is a little bit thinner, but also very flexible, a very, very nice, tight angle of a degree of the tip, so you can uh, nicely also retroflex into the sigma. Plus, this scope has uh, two different chromoendoscopy modalities, LCI and BLI. The first C mark, um, artificial intelligence from Medtronic, GI Genius. We are very proud about this system. The main issue is the patient has been referred because he had a non-well-prepared colonoscopy. And we explained the importance of bowel prep. And we delivered to them, to him, uh, uh, just um, a small, uh, small volume, low volume, uh, one liter plain view bowel prep. And we were very uh, precise in telling him that split modality is important, as well as important that you drink some additional fluids, clear fluids, to improve the benefit and the efficacy of this uh, uh, bowel prep modality. You, uh, the surface must be very clean, but also the way you do colonoscopy, you have to fully expose the mucosa because artificial intelligence is just seeing what you can see. You cannot see things that you are not going to expose. To make a U turn and have a look with the scope and see what uh, artificial intelligence is telling me. You see, you see that? Yeah, okay. Ale, so I, can, I, can yeah. we say it's much easier to see a big green box than a flat uh, one millimeter to a lesion? Can we say it's easier? Uh -huh. Absolutely. So there are a couple of points. So first, you have um, this uh, green box and you also have audio signal telling you that the polyp is there. There is another important point. The artificial intelligence works for the entire day. So regardless of the fact the operator is tired or is not the top expert like you are or some other guys, is, uh, it's not affected by external factors. But don't forget, you see, that there are minimal changes. You see, here yeah. there is another little polyp, no? That yeah. uh, I couldn't yeah. see before, it's just bringing there. Of course, when you have this, you can also use uh, chrome endoscopy to have a look to the characterization. It's typical uh, benign, I would say, PIP pattern. And now I will go to focus in more details. And when the picture is stable, I will use it washing and stay close. And it's, you see, clear adenomatous pattern. So this is something that I absolutely need to remove. So now let me focus on resection. So uh, since a couple of years now, we have learned that a uh, cold polypectomy is a great resource. For so I'm using a dedicated cold snare exacto from US endoscopy. Can you open the snare, please? So it's 10 millimeter, very thin wire. They're helpful, very helpful in making mechanical transection of the tissue. So I, I leave the snare open and I put inside my channel and I try to see where I can use this nail to leverage the tissue. You see, this is difficult position. So I don't move the snare any longer, but now I just focus on the snare. So start closing, stop, open. Okay, I need to advance the scope a little bit. So you, you see the bubble movements. So close, 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 close. Okay, so just to demonstrate that I need some normal tissue around. So this is exactly what we want to achieve with the cold resection. So now you cut, cut please, okay? Transaction mechanically. You saw, you see here, you can use the 
water jet to yeah. inject the super mucosa and have a better look to the margins. So now yeah. I'm having a look margins yeah. and they yes. look extremely clear. What a nice green box, Alexander. What a nice green box. So this is another polyp. I think it's the same one that we have seen before in retroflexion. Open. Open. Okay, fully open again. So I pull back the snare a little bit. And now I leave the snare into the standard position. You see, sometimes things may become challenging. I turn the scope and advance, give some pressure on the tip of the scope. Now close, close, close. Okay, and now you see again, we have uh, in uh, this position, we can see that we catch a little bit of a normal mucosa. This is very, very helpful for the pathologist. So transect, cut. Okay, easily, takes just a few seconds. That's great. So let's a look to this. Okay, that's, that's the kind of polyp you can miss. Yeah. You see? Now, yeah. I think at first this is uh, adenomatous. You see? Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's usually so you're right. I'm uh, doing uh, CADIX characterization by myself. <laughs> so, and there is I another will, one I here. Have, oh, there's another you one. We see? missed this. Yeah. yeah so, 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 this system. Yeah. No, no, Chester, you know, this system that is working either with white light and BLI. So again, uh, you have seen Ale using cold snaring. Now biopsy, there is no one technique for oh. any lesion. You need to adapt uh, what you do to the type of uh, uh, lesion. Let, let me remove the other small polyp, which is here. Okay, you see where it is? Yeah, absolutely. Should you see it? So I will yeah. do it in two pieces. Okay. This slide shows histology and the patient's further course. On the next slide, you see instruments and devices used in this specific case. And finally, here are Alessandro Repici's recommended papers.